And we're back. This is Susan Hamilton, and this is the Offbeat Business Show. So glad you're tuning in to Pegasus NetWaves and hearing us uh, today, uh, sharing your lunch with us. We just really love that. Today we're talking with Christy Raines with Alpha Omega Bookkeeping and Consulting, and she's offering some really great advice for how, and some practical advice that we need to be thinking about in our everyday business so that we're not doing everything and, and we're really spending the core amounts of our time doing the things that we're in business to do. So we were talking earlier about um, the difference between contract and uh, employee labor. And some people call it even subcontracting, right? Right. So the, the, the difference between that and, 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 uh, and an employee. And I forgot okay. what I was going to say. <laughs> You did. What was it? What did I just say? Well, one of the things we were talking about earlier is that um, if you are truly an employee but being paid as an independent contractor, mm -hmm. um, then you're not paying your payroll taxes. Huh. We were talking okay. about the financial responsibilities mm -hmm. that cause your cost of business right. to be expensive anyway. It's going to cost a little right. bit more to work with a business who's working legally. Thank you for reeling that me back in. Yes. So it will cost you more yeah. to pay the payroll taxes. Sure. But, but you've got to roll that into the cost of doing business. Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. And if you're doing everything the proper way, you don't have to worry about in an audit, um, you know, finding out something um, that you're doing it incorrectly and then owing the back taxes, fees, penalties. You know, they're very serious about getting their money. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and the other, and if you're not doing that, and if you are, if the reason that you're not um, paying the correct uh, taxes and the things right. in business that you need to be doing is because you know that's going to cost you, and you don't want to add that to your fees because you don't think the market can bear that, I want you to really think about the type of customer you're going to draw in if you don't do that, because you are going to bring in more of a low dollar customer who is going to keep you running. Most most businesses in America today are going after a customer who can't afford them. Right. And that's a ridiculous uh, way to spend your life because you're on a hamster wheel on a regular basis trying to accommodate people that don't allow you to grow in business. So by focusing, by not being afraid to pay those taxes and to pay appropriately, you can really elevate your business and start attracting the right customer right. that you want. Right. Because it's all about the right customer and client for you. Absolutely. And not everyone is meant to be your client. You know? Oh, very good. Pam mm -hmm. talks about that. Absolutely yeah. not. Uh, you know what, what? What I thought was really interesting is how frequently we don't understand what a balance sheet looks like. Right. And, and what it looks like our, when our, our numbers are put out professionally. You know, what does that look like? I think a lot of us are not uh, spending enough time preparing that and look, taking a good hard look at our our numbers, but we were talking uh, yesterday about all the different ways that can benefit you. Right. And if you want to sh expound on that a yes. little bit. If you're a business owner and you've never seen your financials, you've never produced a balance sheet and a P&L, profit and loss statement, then you really do have a, an issue. You don't know your bottom line. You don't know where all your income is coming from specifically. You might have some revenue streams that are doing really well, and you should be pushing those more some that aren't doing so well that maybe you need to get away from. And then the expenses is where I really like to talk about at the end of the year is you really need to look at all your expenses. And what, you know, particular expenses, what are they doing for you? You know, if you have a vendor, say you a certain marketing vendor, mm -hmm. is it really bringing you what you thought it would bring? You know, look at everything and it is the time to cut. Cut whatever you don't need. Cut the fluff. Get it. Get it out. Oh wow! Yes. This is in a time when everybody says spend more. This is a message from a, a professional account. Yes. Very I, cool. I say it is the time of year where you need to get everything in order to start January fresh. So if you have extra expenses, you need to get them out. Some people have expenses that they don't even know they still have. Maybe they signed up two years ago for a service and they don't even know that they still have it. And you know, get rid of it. You know, and I, I, I'm glad that you even said that because I'm not sure where I stand in that. Mm -hmm. uh, I could definitely be guilty of that, so it'll be handy to have another set of eyeballs looking at that and tracking that and, and, and uh, pointing that out to me. You know, because you, you, you work with a business on the advisory. Right. You're like the advisory panel. You're right. like that, that consult, you bring that consultancy to a business to help them understand how they can be making more sense. 
with what they're doing. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Um, so any, do you see any other areas? If, for instance, if this take, you said earlier that it's going to take countless hours for most businesses to manage their own financials through the course right. of the week. That is true. But you can, you, you know this well enough that you can take one quick look and you know. I, yes, uh, if someone comes to me and they have issues, now they typically don't know all of their issues, mm -hmm. okay? Ah, so that's really wonderful that you're revelatory in that. Yes, yeah, so, so that's one of the big pieces. Um, but yes, I can, I usually do um, a needs assessment with them. And so go over all of their information, the way that they run their business, um, their revenue streams, and then I'm able to tell them, okay, you know, here's what needs to be done, um, and this is what will get you your financial statements. And you, until you get your financial statements, you know, it's hard to really move forward with your business. I would say that that very close to what I'm what I'm teaching with baselines. You, if you don't know where you're starting, right? Even with marketing, when you want to know. Uh, okay, so I've never done email marketing, so now I'm going to do it. Well, I don't know what to gauge that against. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. So start record keeping now. Start paying attention to your analytics now because next year you'll have something to gauge that. You may have information you can go back and reflect on. And that's what you're saying is the same thing here. And that's how important for goal setting is that? It is very important. So you can do you know comparative financial statements, uh, <laughs> compare quarters, compare months over year over year, You know, see when your strongest point is. There could be times where you should be marketing more, and you know you can know that through your your financial statements. Um, comparatives are fantastic. I love what you just said there, and if we can hang there for a second, mm -hmm. because uh, even everything that Pam talks about with promotional products, right. you would know where the money is, and you'd know when you look at your year when you can afford to make that investment. Well, that takes you into cash flow and forecast, and. That's another really important area, too. Let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, and you can't really do your cash flow, your forecast, unless you know your income and your expenses on a monthly basis. So um, that's, that's a really important area. Uh, you know, forecast out what your expenses are, your revenue is, but you can base it on what happened last month, last quarter, last year to help you get your baseline and get you going. And can you, can you work in your anticipated growth to know Absolutely. where you can forecast mm -hmm. uh, Potentials. You can, and then as you get your financials every quarter, every month, you can revise your goals as needed. And that's really great to know that you need to revise your goals. And you know, like I told you yesterday, I, I it's great to have your big goal that you want to get to, mm -hmm. but you can't get to your big goal until, unless you have your small goals. So you have to have your small goals so that you can reach those that will then in the end get you to your big goal. Yeah, you need to take this, keep moving forward. And exactly. it's kind of, you, you mentioned something too when we started the show about how paralyzing that can be. Right? I mean, this right. thing is big. This it thing, does. this thing can be a great big monster, and we go, oh, wow, I'll just deal with it at tax time. Boy, by then, you are running behind, and it's, it's already cost you. Uh, yes, at tax time, it has cost you huge, because now you don't have anything to give your tax professional um, that is organized. So that's going to cost you more for them to, to figure out. And on top of that, uh, we also, as a small business, I want you friends to be so excited about your journey in business that you keep looking for ways to grow your business. And that means take advantage of all the beautiful parts that should be there as an American small business. You should be owning property. You should be able to bring on people that, that, that can do the tasks that you need done so that you can be efficient and effective for your market. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to spend that time with families and you know how I feel about getting involved in community. I, you can't do that without the time, the energy, and the money to do that. You, to be involved as, as part of the healing that our communities need, you have a, a, a responsibility and ability to do that when you work smart and you really take this on. So guys, I really I hope that you think about this. Uh, think about your accounting and your bookkeeping when you're looking at your business. I think you need to get a hold of Christy if you've got any questions. Christy, how can they? How can people reach you? What's the best way to reach you? Well, my website is aobookkeeping.com and sensiblebusinessowner.com. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And do you suggest that they give you a call? Absolutely. My number is 972-743-0602, and it's Alpha Omega Consulting and Bookkeeping. That's wonderful. And before we go, can I just give a plug to your Facebook page? Sure. <laughs> okay. So if they're going to be looking for you on Facebook, that address would be? It's Alpha Omega Consulting and Bookkeeping. Okay. I'm not sure of the exact address, but uh, <laughs> Facebook.com forward slash Alpha Omega Consulting and Bookkeeping. Okay. 
and look that up and get connected. And if you're looking forward and having trouble for that, you can find me at facebook.com slash leaving walls and look up and know that we're connected. And uh, you can follow the people I'm following. That's pretty, that's pretty neat. Uh, this has been a really a wonderful time. I thank you for your time, Christy. That Thanks. is, Thanks. I hope that really helps people get fired up to make smart decisions towards the end of the year here. Yes. Uh, guys, if you'd like to learn more about what it is to be an offbeat business, find out more uh, as far as our upcoming shows and replays of past shows at offbeatbusiness.com. And make sure you connect with us on Google+, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube as we are looking to grow our audience and get this message out. This is Susan Hamilton with the Offbeat Business. Show. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. You want to pop that off again?